In this episode we will be building this beautiful small probe that will be sending to the moon to perform all kinds of wonderful science experiments, including the pressure data, the telemetry, the temperature gauge, the GORSAT and the magnetometer data. We will be also covering the building, including the launch tower, launch clamps and all those things that you need to successfully launch a rocket. Finally, we will be taking care of the launch itself, including some beautiful new cinematics, seeing as the launch tower decouples and the rocket soars into the heavens. But let's get right into the meat of things. So we are beginning with our Proborobodyne Hex, which where we will slap some, you know, reaction controls, we'll slap onto batteries, then we're gonna put an RCS tank and we're gonna be placing the linear RCS port pointing downwards. Uh, it's my method of thrust until I can get the Oscar B, Oscar C and those small tanks and the end engine. Uh, it's a nice workaround and it works pretty well. Right, so we're, let's put uh, some solar panels, let's put a reflectron antenna, communitron for a longer range communication and for the ultra long range or ultra long, I guess I'm talking moon ultra long, we are gonna put I think the HG20 or the HG5. I think maybe it would make sense that we go with the Probodobodyne Octo because I can then I could be cramping more solar panels or actually I could cramp four sets of solar panels rather than three. Symmetry would also work nicely. And then I'm gonna be placing this HG5 hydrogen antenna. Look how nicely it folds. I think it's amazing. Now, we have the second uh, two hot thermometer that we're gonna place. We're gonna place the press met barometer to make sure that the barometry uh, is on. And then I wanna be putting the gore set because it's one of the new experiments that we have. It's only applicable to the science high. And we have the ma magnetometer boom. So that is what we would refer to as the Moon Explorer probe. And that's the one that's supposed to be going into the orbit of Moon. Now, we're gonna be putting some, you know, action groups, one, two, and three, which would essentially translate to antenna, solar panels, and then the hydrogen antenna. Then let's put a decoupler, and then we're, let's put the fairing adapter for the Mothra. Uh, oh boy, things are sticking out, aren't they? Oh. Okay, that needs to be resolved. Hmm. Okay, let's move this. Let's. Uh, shall I take away the batteries? Like to make it shorter? No, I don't think so. Let's keep it as is. Uh, linear RCS ports we put slightly higher so they don't clip in. Uh, the antenna is okay, so the stuff that's sticking out is the magnetometer, which I'm gonna be trying to relocate top side. Good. And then we have the the antenna and maybe okay the solar panels needs to be moved downwards okay let's move them downwards then okay now nicely folded and oh gorset is also sticking out so maybe gorset we could cram on top okay let's put gorset here magnetometer boom make sure that everything fits into the fairing nice and snug look at it go amazing all right controlling once more the action groups that looks good to me uh, then we will be putting a tank. We're gonna be putting this tank together with a terrier engine, which should give us roughly 2000 meters per second delta V, and it does. Beautiful. That is enough to place, you know, our craft into the orbit and also sh ship it off to moon. Now, then we're gonna be putting the Mothra, you know, and then we're gonna be putting the swivel engine at the bottom. That gives us a nice thrust to weight of 1.7 at liftoff, which is just amazing. And uh, then we put some grid fins, just to make sure that they are basically, or not grid fins, sorry, fins. And look at it. It's a nice, you know, low-tech rocket that I think will be working well. So now let's talk the launch stand. Here we have the launch stool, which uh, honestly, I'm not sure if it's the best solution. I would much rather like to have a, a decent launch stand. Let me see, do we have launch tower? That's a rectangular one. Uh, I don't need the rectangular, oh, circular. Okay, let's take that then. Good, then let's talk launch tower. Titan 3 modular launch tower, that's the base, okay. Uh, then we put in this section, oh, rotated sun, good. Then we put more sections on top. Oh, we have a whole tower in one piece. Oh, you don't say. And it looks beautiful. And looks just right. 
Okay, so uh, the only thing that I can tell is that it looks backwards, so I need to rotate it a little bit. Okay, like that, good. Now we have the base arm, which I guess it's fine. Uh, then we need to be placing the umbilical that will be, you know, fueling the rocket. Good, there it is. It's sticking in, that's the important part. And then I would want to go with the holder arm. Look at it go, and ready for the launch. Three, two, one, and ignition. Leaving the tower, and let's go. Hope you like it, I provided just three extra cinematic views because I felt like, you know, I wanted to do something different in this series. Make it, make us appreciate more the launch towers and everything that goes into it. All right, so there is our rocket. It goes straight up and it's, it's a low tech rocket. But one thing that actually bothers me is on the top left corner, you see the local control. That means that it is behaving as if somebody was really flying it rather than remote controlling it via remote tech. I mean, um, people who are using Tundra Industries, can you please fix that so it's compatible with the remote tech? Thank you, I'd appreciate it. All right. So we are ascending and our epoapsis is climbing. It's a little bit more shallow ascent than I would like, to be honest. I'm keeping my thrust to weight around 1.8, 1.9, so that we have a nice ascent path, so to say. And all in all, I mean, it looks pretty nice so far. We get some reheating effects already, uh, yeah, because we are not that high enough tiger. Alright, so uh, let's pitch a little bit upwards and engage the thrusters with all that we can. There we go, we were gonna expand the last amount of delta V and oh, we are still in atmosphere. Okay, then I'm not gonna pop the fairing just yet, and let's pop the engine. Good. Nice. Looks good. I'm, overall, I'm pretty happy with the result. So, the next order of business is to get into orbit. Let's draw a maneuver node and uh, let's just correct it so it's 100 by 100. It's my typical go-to time. I'm not overly concerned because it says here that once we cross the threshold into the space, everything gets corrected and yeah, expanding the solar panels, antenna, there we go pointing a maneuver prograde and let us immediately so we don't forget remember we are playing with the remote tech although we have local control the second we decouple from the top stage we will be actually doing the remote tech stuff so we want to take that into account so after we have circularized i immediately want to set up the big antenna to be pointing or bigger antenna to be pointing to the kerbin and that means that eventually it will try to pick up either the KSC or any other relay satellite that is currently going around it. And as you can see, they're going in less than perfect pattern, but what can you do? All right, there we go. Now let's make an inclination change. We need a tiny inclination change to be on the same uh, on the same plane as the moon, and that we're gonna do using the f the remote text flight computer. It's very handy, guys. You just put plot a maneuver node. You say hold maneuver prograde and execute. All right, getting there, and it will execute the maneuver in one minute. 30 seconds, 10, and here we go. It's a short burn, but very important one to get our moon well aligned and ensure that we are on the same plane as the moon. So let's create a maneuver node to get ourselves to the moon. There we go. This little probe will be getting all the way to the moon and probably it's gonna stay there. I'm thinking it's gonna stay there. So, okay, let's go. Uh, node. Prograde. We want to make sure that we are pointing prograde at the node and execute maneuver. The maneuver is supposed to happen in 21 minutes, so we're just gonna skip uh, the time until we get there. Pulling another orbit around the Kerbin. There we go. And usually, 
Uh, for the moon, a general rule of thumb is if the moon is actually rising behind the Kerman, uh, behind the Kerman, and if you press, you know, the burn, that is a good place to ensure the moon encounter. If you don't have maneuver nodes and are playing in career mode, so that's just a little bit of hand ha extra handy tip for you. All right, look at how beautiful this probe looks. I think it's just amazing. I just love it. Okay, our flight computer is executing the burn as you can tell and let's see if it will secure us that all-important moon encounter usually it's very accurate look at this 39 so 39 periapsis is good enough but i don't think it will secure us the low above uh above the moon low science so we will need to do a slight incl or correction but we're gonna do that once we come there so there we go let us just enjoy and appreciate. First of all, let's do the magnetometer, transmit the data. We might as well utilize all of our resources that we can. So, okay. Then we have the telemetry we have. The irradiance is only available from high orbit. So once we get to in space high, okay, let's do the irradiance scan. Okay, 15 science, beautiful. There we go. Let's do once again the magnetometer data, transmit. There we go. Some extra science doesn't hurt because those are the new experiments which we haven't done already from the carbon orbit. And now it's just a matter of enjoying the transition all the way to the moon. First things first, I'm going to do the maneuver node and I'm going to do maneuver node which will actually ensure us that our periapsis above the moon is actually low above. So I'm going, going to shoot for below 15, so to say. 14.2, I think that's good enough. I think that's all right. Okay, so the burn will be in five hours and 45 minutes. And I'm actually going to tell my flight computer, point the node prograde and make sure that you execute the maneuver. It's one of the benefits of playing with the remote tech. You can actually just relax and enjoy the show. Queue up the maneuvers and just chill. All right. Here's our beautiful view as we leave Kerbin. And here's the moon. We are getting in its sphere of influence, and you know what that means? It's time for science! Alright, so, let's see. We are high above Midlands. Okay, atmospheric pressure scan, temperature. We are transmitting all the data that we can. Telemetry report. There we go. Then we have the magnetometer. Transmit. And then we have the irradiance scan, which is only moon high, but it's 20 science. It's not definitely not something to be sneezed at. All right, or sniffed at. Okay, so we are coming closer to the moon and also our maneuver node burn. I'm probably gonna snap uh, still here for the, uh, for the episode because it just looks beautiful. Here's the moon. All right, and we are coming to currently our periapsis, which means we were gonna do the uh, maneuver node. So let's see, the maneuver node is gonna happen in two minutes and 46 seconds. It will be handled by a flight computer, so we don't have to worry about it. I just love remote tech. I mean, queuing the, the things with the remote tech is just amazing. Okay, there we go, beautiful, all right. Okay, so now currently, because of how I stupidly I made my relay network, I don't have a connectivity, which means, okay, I cannot transmit the data, but what I can do, I can actually do the science, and I'm gonna transmit it once we are in the range. Let's just think about it as if the probe was pre-programmed to do the science, okay? So now we're going to do accelerate time. And when we get to the other side of Kerbin, look at this. We already have connectivity, which means it's time to send the data, right? There we go. Sending another data, reviewing the data, sending the data, telemetry. Let's send out the telemetry. Is there anything else that's biome specific what we could do in theory? Maybe, I don't know. Look at this. If that's not the screenshot for the episode, I don't know what is. It's just beautiful, isn't it? All right. So let's see. Can we log X some extra magnetometers? I don't think so. Okay. So I think it's time that we 
dump and get rid of this transfer. So we're gonna make it sure that it impacts, okay? It's on a suborbital trajectory. And then we are gonna have the RCS and we're gonna burn to raise our periapsis to make sure that we stay in the orbit. So there we go, our dinky little probe. Oh no, that's a screenshot for the episode, definitely. All right, well, you know, Look at it go. It's really beautiful. I wanted to catch both aspects, but you cannot do both. Well, tell you what we're gonna do, guys. Uh, I think it's as pretty good time to start wrapping it up for the episode. Please hit that like button if you're enjoying the show, and I will be sharing a new video in the top right corner.